Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe. And uh, I'm gonna talk about float fishing today because it's something I really enjoy. But I'm not talking about floats like that. I'm talking about floats like that. And the reason that um, people use these floats is that a lot of uh, Victorian anglers in particular use these floats is that, look, they work well. They're very buoyant. They can hold your, um, your bait uh, off the bottom or it can hold it on the bottom if you need to but they float very well and uh, you know, they're very easy to see. The trouble with these is that they're very very buoyant so when the fish actually comes along and pulls on this it actually feels some resistance and while they still catch fish uh, and lots of people catch fish that way what I prefer to do is use something like that. Now this is uh, this came from the UK it's called a waggler float and I think it's called a waggler because when it's cast out they move as they land, or it's even maybe the way they move in the water. But uh, you'll notice it's clear, so it's a, called a crystal waggler, because it's crystal clear, um, with the bright top and a weight at the base. So what happens is that when you actually put this into the water, the line goes through here, so it's weighted, it's got line only at one end, and usually what you want to do is you want to keep virtually all of the float under the water except for that top very orange and visible stem. The reason being is that if you can weight your float properly, so you'll have to put a couple of split shot on here to get it right down to there, but once you can do that, there's very little resistance to the, water, to the fish. They'll pick up that bait and really they don't feel any, any, anything holding that bait back. It seems very natural. They're more willing to take the bait. The great thing about a float, of course, is that when the fish is moving with it, it'll either pull it under, so you see it disappear, or sometimes they lift it. They'll lift the bait up and you see this rise. Works really well. And I've got to tell you, there is nothing more exciting than watching a float you've cast out, so starting to move. You know something's happening and you've just got to know when to strike. Now, this type of fishing is really popular in Europe. Uh, it's popular throughout Asia as well, but specifically the, the gear that I'm about to show you is very much European. Uh, what they do is they like to have very long rods um, so that they can basically have a lot of length between the float and the hook. They'll fish in water up to sort of, you know, three and a half meters deep. So they need a rod long enough, longer than that, so that they can actually be able to handle that distance between the float and the, the hook. They fish largely on the bottom. Not always, I mean, they'll lift slightly sometimes depending on where they feel the, the fish are biting, but it's usually on the bottom. So you're actually fishing on the bottom, but your float is at the top as the indicator. Now, the rod that I use, and uh, I've had this for a long time, this is a, uh, a Silstar match rod. Now matches, these are the types of um, fishing competitions run in the UK. And this thing here is 3.9 meters long. Okay? So it's plenty long enough for me to be able to fish into relatively deep water uh, and easily handle a lot of line between the, the float and the hook. And it is fantastic fun. And at one point, uh, when I was a little bit younger, I used to do a lot of float fishing because I'd fish lakes and it would be fantastic for catching things like uh, trout and redfin and carp um, and s s other species that we have. And as I say, the excitement of watching that float go on, it, it is really hard to match. But uh, these types of uh, rods, they've got plenty of guides on them. The guides are held out across and away from the rod blank so that the line doesn't actually, when it's wet, doesn't stick to the, uh, the blank itself. Largely because, uh, you know, Fishing in wet weather with very fine line, that can happen quite a bit, and you need to be able to sort of cast out and the line to glide properly. But anyway, this comes in three sections. So as I say, it's pretty long, all graphite, so it's uh, very, very nice and stiff, which is important for float fishing. You don't want a whippy rod when you're float fishing because you want to be able to lift the line very quickly once you see that float go under. If you have a big bow on the line and a very floppy rod, it's going to, not going to lift properly, not going to lift quickly, and you won't hook into that fish. So what you're doing is you're lifting, you pull as much line as possible, and that quickly pulls that hook into the fish's mouth. So I just break it down. So in three sections, nice cork handle as you see, and the tip 
this is graphite it's quite fine but it's still very very stiff so it's pretty easy to uh, to pick up all of that line uh, really enjoy using this it takes a little bit of practice to use these types of floats but once you get used to it there is just nothing like it now the floats that are used come in various forms and it depends on the conditions that you're fishing in um, if you're fishing really really light conditions on fairly shallow water and that you can use little floats like this as small as this you'll see it has a little tiny bit of weight there it also has a very very fine stem that's so that you're catching you know if you're only going to catch relatively small trout or a small fish generally in light conditions in shallow water okay you don't need much resistance and so it's very light there small fish would not feel anything at all you just have that much above the uh, that much color above the top of the water so that's what you can see uh, and obviously it's so thin you can't, you can't cast out fire with this anyway because you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, it's got a little bit of weight at the end and this helps to um, just give you that weight to actually cast it. Otherwise it's very, very light. So then you can go up in size. Um, this is just something, a slightly bigger one. It's called a bodied float. It's got a bit of a bulge there which carries a bit more buoyancy, a bit more weight. Uh, this is so that you can cast out a little bit further. Same thing, has the weight there and um, it just is also for relatively shallow waters. But as you need to cast out further, um, you can use things that have got, uh, that are heavier bodies. So this type of float here, same type of arrangement, it's got, it's got weight there, more weight there, a bigger body with some weight in it, um, and plenty of color there. Now that's getting heavier so that you can get it further out. But then you can go up to much heavier floats like this one here. And this really is for casting out long distances on uh, big lakes with deep water. Plenty of buoyancy there, but once you put the right weight on, you put the weight on, it's got carries weight there anyway. You put a couple of split shot either side of this to hold it in place on the line. When you cast that, there's enough weight there to cast it quite a long way. And that's the idea of getting out into those big lakes. Also, there's quite a bit of buoyancy there below the water, so what it does is it makes it a bit more stable. In other words, if there's a little bit of drift in the water and that, um, this can actually, this holds it under, holds it in place. And then one of the other things that they use is they also sometimes use these, if you're working in crystal clear water, very, very clear water, you don't want the fish to see anything. That's why they use these crystal wagglers because they're very, 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 very clear. They blend in with the water there, the fish can't see them. Um, and also, you know, the same type of arrangement, they basically have the colour at the top so you can see that, and a bit of weight at the bottom, so it's easy to cast out. And then finally, they use these in canals a lot. This is a little float, very, very fine stem, uh, same as one of the ones I showed you before. And so in the, in the canals there, which are not that wide or deep, they'll use things like this, which are able to just be plonked in place. Uh, but because they're so fine, even small fish don't notice any resistance whatsoever. Now there are other types of floats that have been created that just um, that help you deal with different conditions. Um, I've, you might have seen me fishing with one of these before I fish with a pole with one of these. Um, and what it is, is this float here just simply has the body on it. It's quite buoyant with a bulb there. The reason for that bulb there is under fairly windy conditions or where you've got a bit of moving water, it doesn't get pulled under easily. So you, you want to be fishing on the bottom you know, fairly straight down, you put your burley in, always they, they either, they're throwing in bait or they're throwing in burley to a certain spot that they fish their float over. So it's not just random, they've, uh, they've worked out sort of the deeper spots and then they'll fish to a spot, attract those fish in. But if there's a bit of movement in the water, a bit of wind, they want some real stability. So something like this basically allows, the body allows the buoyancy, but they'll, what they will do is I'll put enough weight on this to get it to about there. And then it's that buoyancy, just that buoyancy there that is holding this out of the water. So if the wind, if the conditions are a bit rough, especially if the, the water's moving up and down, what'll happen is this will tend to move with the water rather than get the water run over the top of it. Also, it'll stay in place. Now, as I said, they like to, uh, and I like to get food and burley out to where you're fishing. Now, one of the ways of doing that <laughs> is to actually put the, put the, um, the burley or bait into a container that is connected to your float. So this one just this one here just basically has a little cap at the end that you take off. It you then put 
often they'll put things like uh, maggots in here, which and they've got holes, so that'll crawl. They crawl out and drop to the bottom. Fantastic way of getting food out, falling directly down in the uh, into the the water, over the top of your hook. Same arrangements. This is for clear waters and lakes. Got the top and the indicator there. This here offers no resistance whatsoever. Carries a little bit of weight with it so that it'll actually, uh, you don't have to put too much split shot on that. But what it does then is it delivers its payload over the top of your hook. I've used this, I remember I used um, one of these in the Grampians in a big lake up there. And uh, I caught some really good trout. They, I was using uh, the Magus's bait. This was absolutely dynamite. And then you would have seen this in one of the um, previous videos I've done on float fishing just recently. Um, now this is a Polaris float. It's got this mechanism here, which locks the line in place. And so this is one of the few floats that you can use with a burly cage. So the, the burly cage is locked in down the bottom near the, near the, um, the hook, just like you would with any type of um, running sinker or running burly line. So if you're just fishing on the bottom, you have that set up there. But then this is, this is put onto the line, and what it does is it actually allows you to have a short rod. You can cast that out because this is actually moving on the line. It falls right down to where the burly cage is. But when you cast in, what happens is the burly cage, the weight goes to the bottom, and this thing here, it's got quite a bit of buoyancy, actually lifts up the line. If you keep the line slack, it lifts up the line to the surface, floats on the surface. When you tighten up, it actually pulls the line through here. The line is pulling through here until it's tight. Once that line is fairly tight, this locks into place, called a lock slide mechanism. So once that happens, you cast out, you've got the top of the water there, you've got your, um, the float there, you start to wind in, it starts to go under like this, you keep winding until it gets to the point you need in the water and you're all ready to go, and then you've got your float working that way. So there are some different ways of doing this. I particularly like this one because I can still use my burly cages. And I've done that recently. You might have seen me in that uh, the float fishing um, video I did where I caught a trout. Sometimes under different conditions, you might need to change your float. So rather than have to, you know, it's thread it on your line, it's right, rather than have to cut off and then re-thread everything, Basically, uh, what one of the mechanisms they use is this little tube here with a swivel, half swivel at the end of it. Uh, what you do is you just, that's what you put on your line. And then the other floats can just be threaded onto it. So you take this one off, put another one on, and they thread onto that. So that little device there means that you can change floats anytime you need to. Very, very simple, but it's great when weather conditions change. It could be you know, very, very still when you start off, so you need something light or there's no movement in the water. Then the wind starts to come up a little bit. You need to put a heavier float on, just pull this one off, put another one on. <laughs> it's a great device. Now I've seen anglers with, uh, that float anglers with a heap of gear. And the way that they keep uh, things properly set up is to keep their floats on uh, little plastic uh, reels like this. Effectively, they've got the length of line holding their float. It's got the, the weights attached to it. Everything's ready. They'll attach this to their main line. And all they do is they have rows and rows of these that they've pre-set up so that it's got all the right weight to weigh it down just to that tip. And so they have little boxes full of these things. It's a really neat way of ke keeping them. So all they have to do is basically unwind this connect they make a loop at the end of the line on this they make a loop at the end of their main line and they just loop to loop connect them and they're ready to go and so they can actually change whole setups without having to put new weight on them weigh them up and everything because when you actually go fishing with floats what you have to do is you actually have to do two things one is you have to cast out and make sure that you've got the right amount of line between the top of your between your float and the bottom because to start off you usually want to be fishing on the bottom so you have to do that the other thing you have to do is put enough weight on your float so that you just get it to that point there. You've got the stem showing, but the rest of the float is underwater, offering no resistance to the fish. And that's why it's so effective. But they keep them on these things. And uh, I mean, I keep them myself like that, just so they're ready to go and you can change over at any time. Now, the, the way that they, I mentioned split shot, the way that they keep 
those uh, the floats on is to lock them on um, either side of the line where they've got them on there with split shot but this is not the split shot that we would typically use in Australia this is soft shot and um, it's it comes in a range of different sizes each, each one of these little sections in here has different sizes from a um, AAA down to an SSG which is <laughs> microscopic um, and what that helps them to do is because it's soft it's easy to open and put on the line because when you're dealing with the really small um, split shot it's very hard to open up and get on the line now our Australian stuff it tends to be harder lead but their split shot lead is I give it that's that's the triple A so you can see that's still not that big you can see I've opened it there and it's very easy to push onto the line but I want to give you an idea of just how small it can get this is <laughs> oh boy I don't know even if I, if I can actually hold this properly this that there that little tiny bead there is a number eight you can't even hardly see it in my fingers that little tiny spot there is a size eight and that's how delicate some of the anglers over there especially the competition anglers who have to weigh things down absolutely perfectly that is how small these things can get so that they've got everything weighed down perfectly offering no resistance to the fish there's quite there's really quite a talent in actually doing it properly so what they do is they'll, they'll lock the uh, the float on they'll put a split shot either side of the float to hold it in place and then they'll put other uh, split shot down the line further towards the hook until it's weighted perfectly so that just that tip is above the water now it's also popular fishing um, moving water and uh, I mean there, there's times when people use these waggler floats which have only got the connection at one end uh, they use those in running water so they cast in and it just goes downstream but what is more popular are stick floats these little things which would have been probably made out of little piece of wood in the past um, this one is made out of I think it's graphite this one's out of uh, plastic what happens with these is you can see the shape of them uh, is wedge shape coming down to a tip they are held on in two places they slide on with a little band just a little rubber band that um, you put onto the line so that you can just push that into it push that into it so it's held both top and bottom that floats along these move better they tend to hold the line better in running water and that running water fishing is really great fun the thing you have to do though is you have to be able to usually throw out little bits of burley tiny bits of burley and bait offerings out into the the water stream in line with where you're casting so you cast to a point and then you let your float go downstream carrying your bait below it if you're throwing bits of um, bits of food bait and burly out at times small amounts every cast what will happen is that all of that goes down stream attracts those fish up and eventually what happens is they'll find that they're on the bottom they're moving along picking up the loose offerings on the bottom they'll eventually find that hook that's being carried by your float so you have to actually this is uh, there's a technique to doing it but what you do is you, you cast upstream or cast in front and allow line to peel off and run downstream a certain distance in line with where you've been throwing out your bait it works very well and in fact it was great just recently I met a person I met Alan who was fishing the Maribyrnong River um, with a running style of um, float fishing and I'll just show you what happened there it was very interesting so today just as I was fishing uh, a fellow angler came along Alan who has uh, is actually while born in New Zealand he spent his life in England and has got a lot of the uh, the angling techniques they use over there and very efficient techniques I'll say too because <laughs> they're many of the ones that I use myself but in talking to Alan he started to show me some of the gear that he's using now which I'm sure most people won't have seen before and also some of the gear that he's made so Alan would you just like to, to run us through sure. first off your your um, rod and reel and then some of your floats I'm, I'm fishing with a uh, fishing with a very light it's actually a spinning rod uh, bought here in Australia uh, but it suits my purposes pretty well I'm fishing with a um, this is a center pin reel um, or, or Nottingham style reel it was now, um, see this everyone this looks like um, something like a, a fly reel that's right 
Uh, it looks like a fly reel, but uh, unlike a fly reel, it runs. Uh, it just runs and really Lines. smoothly. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, it's a wide arbor reel, uh, which means it has a really broad uh, broad diameter through here. It's built for fishing really light float lines. So, in terms of the line I'm fishing, I'm fishing a uh, four pound main line and a uh, two and a half pound hook length uh, or leader, whatever you call it. Uh, through to a through to a size 16 hook today, so which is everyone have a look at the size of the hook now You know that I talk about size 14s. Well have a the have a look at the size of this one That is a size 16 and I'd go down to I'd go down to an 18 or a 20 on a On a really hard biting day when fish aren't feeding uh, when they're not feeding confidently I would say uh, I'm fishing um, I'm fishing just above bottom uh, which is actually uh, fishing longer than the rod length, which is quite quite challenging. But uh, and then I'm fishing with a uh, what's known as a shirt button shotting pattern, uh, which is like the shirt like the sh shirt buttons on a shirt. You, the your shotting pattern goes up through here. So these are mainly number fours and number sixes. So you'll see that these are evenly spread out split shot. Yeah, and that would go through to a uh, this is a stick float. So this is. Um, this is attached at the top and bottom which allows you to hold back the float in flowing water uh, that really means that um, uh, if you were fishing with a waggler in flowing water and you held it back the float would tend to pull under uh, because of the, the, the weight between the, the hook and the rod tip however with the stick float secured at the top as well and you can actually hold it back and it stays uh, stays afloat so these are um, these are a very old-fashioned British way of, uh, of fishing. They're they're made of cane and balsa, and then there's uh, whipped threads through here, which uh, mostly for decorative effect. But you've made this yourself? Yeah, I make them in my garage. Isn't that beautiful? And the, the waggler you were talking about is only fixed at the bottom. Yeah, so a waggler floats great saying. for great for still water. So here's an example of a of a waggler style float. No worries. So this is a waggler float. So this would be attached bottom end only uh, once again it's bolster and cane and, and whipped on through and and the idea is that with often with fish like uh, uh, carp and tench which are very uh, popular British uh, match fishing species not so popular here in Australia um, but you can get something which is a standard bite where it'll go under the water like that or something that's a lift bite where you'll get it to raise up that way and that's where they take the bait straight off the bottom and allows the float to raise there you go Beautiful. float fishing in a heartbeat and could I, we have a look at some of the, the floats you have made, yeah, sure. Alan? This is uh, this is very very impressive. Um, so uh, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of factory maids in here, um, but these are um, these are th that one's fitted with a, a, a quill top. Um, so, uh, but once again, bolster and cane, and then through to something like this, which is a little bit a uh, little bit bigger. This is done with a goose quill, uh, just a whipped goose quill. Once so again, fixed that's right. top and bottom. And that's, just a, that's just a feather. So what's happened is they've yep. just stripped off the feather. Yep. They've just stripped off the feather. That's why it's got a bit of a bend in it. Yep. But incredibly buoyant. Super sensitive. Yep. Uh, it's a natural float making material. And then through to something like that, which is, um, uh, it's like an old Harcourt perch bobber. A uh, traditional way of fishing for, for perch would have been with something like this. And you can fish a small dead bait or a live bait under it. And when we talk about perch, we're talking about what here would be our redfin. Redfin, yeah, yeah, yeah. redfin. That's exactly right. So, okay. we well, go. Alan, thank you very much for that. That is most impressive, and You're it's welcome. great to see a, a fellow angler <laughs> with something different. You're welcome. Thanks. Now, if you have enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you're interested in gear and burley and a lot of information from my blog, go to my website, howtofish.com.au.